Corinthians chapter 13. I want to read with you because our whole, um, our whole series is on uh, I love blank. And here's the thing. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Here's what the scripture says. I'm reading from the ESV. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all that I have and deliver it my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love doesn't envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. It doesn't insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect is come, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, and reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For we know we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. For now we do, but then face to face. Now, I know in part, then I shall be, know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now, faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. You may be seated, and may God... Add blessings to the receiving of the word today. The greatest of these is love. Um, this whole message is I love blank. And, and I've got to tell you that as I was studying this, there were three things, three sentences that came to mind. And I believe these three sentences will change your life. These three sentences will change your life. It's not I am hungry. That's not it. All right. <laughs> Three sentences, three words. Number one is this, God is love. Someone, uh, Pastor Owen, a few weeks ago said, how big is the love of God? Well, how big is God? However big God is, that's how big his love is. And it's awesomely unfathomable how much he loves you and me and how much he is love. Second thing is this, love never ends. Love never ends. People come and go. People die, move on to heaven. People, people, uh, love never ends. Never ends. And the third sentence is this, I love you. Those three sentences can change your life. God is love. Love never ends. And I love you. And so I want you to know this morning that if you're in this place and you don't realize God is love, you need to know that before you leave here. And if you're in this place and you think that God's love for, has ended for you, it has not ended. His love never ends. And if you're in this place and you don't realize that you are loved, God wants you to know and we want you to know that we do love you. We love you. See, the Bible says that there, uh, love is, is of God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. For God is love. And we have four Greek words for love that we use, three of them are found in the word, one of them's not, but they're words that we use uh, that describe the various types of love. Because we can say we love a post on Facebook, and it doesn't mean the same as we love our wife. Or we can love pizza, and it doesn't mean the same as that we love our dog. So, so here's, here's what I want you to know, friends. There's words for love that are different in the Greek. One of the words is the word eros in the Greek, and it means romantic love. It's a love between a husband and a wife. It's a love between a couple and a, a dating. It's a love that goes beyond ordinary, uh, just liking somebody. It's love. It's a, it's a love that is attractional. It's very attractive. It's the love that you're going to celebrate next weekend, right? I mean, guys, you know Valentine's is next weekend, don't you? You got quiet. It's scaring me. I said several years ago, uh, next weekend is an incredible, monumental, wonderful weekend coming up. And uh, somebody smiled, and I said, it's not Valentine's weekend next weekend. NASCAR starts next weekend, next Sunday, Daytona 500. Anyway, next weekend is a big deal. But understand, Eros is this romantic, passionate, I'm attracted to you, you're attracted to me type of love. And it is a real love. It, it's really, you, you see that, you see it in, in, in people that the Bible says that, that when Adam saw Eve, he named her woman, right? 
He named her woman. We used to say in the youth ministry, when Adam saw Eve, he said, whoa, man. <laughs> I, I, but I didn't use that in the first service. I shouldn't <laughs> use it in this one either. But then there's another love. Another love is a love in the Greek called storge love. And what that love is, is familial love. It's love of a family. It's a love of a, of a mom for her children or children for their mother and father for his children and child for his father. It's grandparents that love you and grandchildren that love them. It's this love that you experience that has nothing to do with anything other than this sense of well-being, this love that you and I know called family. And sometimes I know people that say, well, I don't have family. And you know what? The Bible says God will put lonely into family. And many times God uses a local church to be like a family to you so that you become brothers and sisters in the Lord because our blood is not the blood that we have running through our veins, but the blood of Jesus Christ that makes us one. And family's a big deal, isn't it? Family's a big deal. Matter of fact, uh, last week, I didn't get to preach last week, and so you guys get most of it out of me today. I'm a double time. But the, the love of family, the love of family was celebrated the past couple weeks. And, and actually, uh, I didn't get to share it last week. I wanted to today. It's this love of family. And, and you guys saw the news. And in the news, there was, a, there was a, a tragedy that happened. But the emphasis in the surrounding the tragedy was, a, was the, the love that one uh, father had for his daughter. And both of them died. And there's a clip on ESPN I want you to see that talked about not only that the tragedy, but what this man, Kobe Bryant, saw himself as. He saw himself as a girl dad. Watch this. It's likely that you're hearing many personal anecdotes about Kobe Bryant, so here's mine. I met Kobe one time backstage at an event for ESPN in New York, and I saw him and I thought, oh my gosh, that's Kobe. I got to get a picture for the gram. Hmm. That's the picture. I didn't get it for a few minutes because as I approached him, he immediately commented on my rather large eight-month pregnant belly. How are you? How close are you? What are you having? Mm -hmm. A girl, I said, and then he high-fived me. Girls are the best. I asked him for advice on raising girls, seeing as though he quite famously had three at the time, and he said, just be grateful that you've been given that gift because girls are amazing. His third daughter, Bianca, was about a year and a half old at the time, so I asked if he wanted more children. And he said that his wife, Vanessa, really wanted to try again for a boy, but was sort of jokingly concerned that it would be another girl. And I was like, four girls, are you joking? Like, what would you think? How would you feel? And without hesitation, he said, I would have five more girls if I could. I'm a girl dad. When it came to sports, he said that his oldest daughter was an accomplished volleyball player and that the youngest was a toddler, so TBD. But that middle one, he said, that middle one was a monster. She's a beast. She's better than I was at her age. She's got it. That middle one, of course, was Gigi. When I reflect on this tragedy and that half an hour that I spent with Kobe Bryant two years ago, I suppose that the only small source of comfort for me is knowing that he died doing what he loved the most, being a dad, being a girl dad. Being a girl dad. And you know, all over Twitter, there was a hashtag girl dad where men all over the country were taking pictures with their daughters. Actually, mine's on there, too, but I'm not going to show you that because it's an embarrassing picture of Chelsea. But you could, God bless her. But uh, God bless her. Um, but I want you to know that all over the country, men took pictures with their daughters. And I hate the tragedy, but think about it for a moment. The men that are saying, I'm so proud that I have girls. We've got girl dads up here. John's a girl dad. God bless him. Alice is a girl dad. But not just girl dads, some of you are, are girl moms, and others of you are guy dads, and others of you are guys moms. Or maybe you're like me and Kim. We, we have a, a mix of, of son, two sons and a daughter, and, and like Kim, I hashtag her mom life. Notice this, mom life. Sorry, Kim, I got a picture of you on there, right? Mom life. And so it's a picture of mom with her kids, or even, yay, or dad life, or dad life, where, where dad, is, dad is with his boys. Listen, and his daughter. But understand there's something about the family love that's deeper than just ordinary, just, just like, and it's this depth of love that goes greater. And then there's another kind of love called the phila love. It's the word meaning brotherly love. It's a love that, that you have for your friends. It's, it's this love that the whole city of Philadelphia was named city of brotherly love. It's this idea that you love your friends. There's, you, you have strong friendships. 
And many of those are because you have things in common. C.S. Lewis says it like this in his book, The Four Loves. Friendship is born at the moment when one man says to another, what, you too? I thought that one by myself. I thought that no one but myself. In other words, that you're in this, that you're in this situation where you began to live life and you experience life and you realize you're not the only one. That wait a minute, that I'm going through this, but I have a friend of mine who's going through the same thing. Your car's not working? Well, mine had the same issue. You're trying to fix that dryer? Mine did too. I, 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 you're, you're plumbing. I remember talking to somebody about fixing plumbing at my home, and I am banned from that. <laughs> I hear stick to preaching a lot in my house. Just stick to preaching. We'll call somebody to do that. But, but, to be able, but to be able to be next to somebody who, who says, oh, I had that issue too in my house. I, we, got, we have to call somebody to help us too. That there's something about knowing that if you have a struggle, there's somebody that's next to you, the same thing. You become friends in that because you realize you're going in the same area. You're going the same direction. And you realize your friendship brings you together. It's, it's ladies that get together and realize that raising their kids was, it was very easy when you saw other people's kids and you were single. And that kid was taking ketchup and, and using ketchup as a paint on the mirror at, on, on the window at McDonald's. And it was easy to judge then. And then you realize, and then you start having kids, you realize, wait a minute, it may, may not be quite as easy as you thought. And that's why sometimes ladies connect the way to do, and men connect the way to do. Because there's friendships, you're saying, oh, you too? I've had that same thing. I've gone through that same issue. I've had that same battle. That's friendship, y'all. And that's friendship that's connected together. It's friendship that says, I'm with you. Now, let's work this thing out. And, and actually, all loves are that way. Listen, do you, you say, well, I'm not interested. It's too vulnerable to love anybody. Really? Well, C.S. Lewis said something about that too, by the way. He says, to love at all is to be vulnerable. Loving anything, and love anything, and your heart will be wrung and possibly broken. If you want to make sure from keeping it intact, you don't want your heart to break, you must give it to no one, not even an animal. Lock it up safe in the casket or coffin of your selfishness. I don't want to take a chance. I don't want to reach out. I don't want to step out. So I'm just going to hold. I'm going to be selfish and not try to love anybody, not care about anybody. It's all about me because you feel like you might get hurt if you try to love again. And truthfully, you will find yourself in a coffin of your own death. Because you can't live without love, right? You can't live without love, which is the number one thing the, the number one topic today for me for in my message to you is the love of God it's called the agape love beyond the love of friends and beyond the love of a spouse or or dating or attractiveness and beyond the love of of your family there's a love called the agape love of God the agape love of God is a love that is it is unconditional love the Bible says God is love and God loves so much that his love is greater than any of those loves this kind of love is unconditional love that is always giving and it is impossible to be taking or be a taker. It's always a love that goes and supersedes what's expected. It is love that loves without strings attached. John 3, 16 says it very clearly. For God so agape the world, he so loved the world, he gave his only son. We sang in the first service, we'll sing it at the end of this service, that the love of God really is relentless. His love is active and his love is unconditional and powerful and is sacrificial and, and it sometimes has never returned. We can never repay God the love he's given us. But the love of God that he has shown us in Jesus Christ, the Bible says, has been poured out in our hearts. And his love, we not only experience, we also give. So we can give his love. And so that's where I read in the scripture something that, that you notice. That many of you have read this scripture before. I've read these scriptures uh, many times at, at weddings. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, talks about the importance of love. That love is greater than any other thing that we experience in life. You know that, right? Even in church, love is greater. Love is greater than speaking in tongues. By the way, it says if I tell with the tongues of men and angels, I believe in speaking in tongues. I believe in praying in the Spirit. But that it does not give you a license to not love. Matter of fact, if you do that, then you're just making a lot of noise, but no love's involved. And Paul was serious about this because he says this church he was talking to, which could be our church, they were saying, well, I get to do what I want to do, and you don't like it, you can lump it. Bump it or jump it. And Paul is saying that is not 
how you live. You live in everything you do out of love. And he says also that if I have the gift of prophecy, it's useless if I don't operate in love. And I can have, the, I can have all kind of knowledge. Think about it, all kind of knowledge, but not have love. It's useless. Because here's what the Bible says. The Bible says love puffs up. I mean, love, thank you. Knowledge puffs up. Love edifies. Thank you, Pastor Brian. I'm glad he was listening. <laughs> knowledge puffs up, makes you prideful. Love builds up. All of us in this room have knowledge that other people don't have. I went to college. I study. I read a lot. I'm in the Word. I'm trying to grow all the time in things, and, and I have a lot of knowledge. My dad went to high school. After high school, went to work. And so I'm, I'm you know, I'm, edu- I'm college educated until, and I think I know what's going on, until my air condition breaks down. Now I'm calling him. Or my car has an issue. I call him. Somebody said one time, everybody makes fun of a redneck till their car breaks down. Amen, y'all. I, I got somebody, y'all, at least this morning. I'm glad to hear that. But knowledge is an arrogant thing and can puff you up, but love edifies and builds up. And he says this, if I have faith to move a mountain and have love, it doesn't mean anything. He says, I can even be someone who gives everything I have away and actually die for the, quote, unquote, the gospel. But if I don't have love, it is absolutely a waste. Love is the number one motivator and should be the number one desire of our heart. Not everything else that we pursue, but his love and his love through us. There's some things about love that I want you to know. Here's what love is not. You ready? Here's some virtues of love. Let me tell you what love is not. The Bible says that I just read it, and I'm pretty simple, just simple guy, and I'm reading a simple scripture. Here's what the Bible says. Love is not envious. I heard someone say one time, envy, here's what envy, you know what envy is? Envy is, envy is resenting God's goodness in someone else's life while ignoring God's goodness in your own life. I heard somebody say this the other day too, ready? This is, what if the only thing you got today is what you thank God for yesterday? Put that in your crock pot for a bit. Love is not envious. Love is not boastful. I just said that a minute ago. Love is not arrogant. Love is not rude. I I don't like being around rude people. That's not love. People walk into church sometimes and folks, not this church or other churches, make comments to people rudely, rudely. There's not love in that. Love doesn't insist on its own way. I'll talk about that in a minute. But I've been around people, they insist on getting their own way. I've been that way before too. You do it my way. If you don't do it my way, then it's the highway. I want this, and we're doing this, and we're doing that. And I want it my way. Love is irritable. Love is not irritable. Love isn't resentful. Doesn't hold on to stuff. I'm going to get that person back. I'm going to make them pay. Yeah, right. It's just these things aren't love. So if anybody's operating in that, they're not operating in love. You understand that, right? If they operate that way, they're not operating in love. But there's other things love is. This is what it says love is. Love is patient, right? Some of y'all some are loving people. <laughs> That's what I'll say. Y'all are very patient with folks. Love is kind. Love rejoices in truth. Love, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love is patient. Back in my day, people used to, guys and girls would go back and forth. They'd, go, they'd start dating, and, and they would say, well, if you love me, then, then, then we, we'll go all the way with each other. And I used to tell young people this. Well, the Bible says love, and, love is patient, so they know, must not love you. Love is kind. This is like a lead balloon, just boom, we're dropping right in. Love is kind. Love rejoices in truth. Yes, bears things, lifts you up, carries things. For you, love believes things. You're going to make this. It's going to happen in your life. Hopes all things. I just, I see your future. I see great things ahead of you. Love endures all things and says you're going to press through this. That's what love does. Love doesn't say you're just not going to make it and I hope you fail and I hope you, whatever. Love says let's do this. Let's move forward. Let's see great things happen. Let's be, believe for the future and not always staring at the past. Love always does that 
And the Bible says, love never fails. Next point. The Bible says, I just read it, prophecy one day will cease. You will not need prophecy one day because you will know clearly everything you need to know because you'll be with Jesus. Tongues will cease. You don't have to have a prayer language and have a direct contact with God in your spirit by praying in the spirit because you'll see him face to face. That, by the way, that's one thing I do like about having a prayer language and, and praying in the Spirit is that I, I'm praying, my Spirit's praying directly to God and the devil doesn't know what's going on. He's confused. Anyway, I'll preach that some other time. Y'all get nervous. If I have knowledge, I will, it will cease because I will know just as I'm known. I, I'll know everything. I'll be with him and he'll be with me. I'll be with Jesus. He will return. I will, be, I will go by the grave and I'll be in his presence. Whatever it is, I know that love will never fail and love will last even through the giftings ended, even through going, uh, dying and getting to, going to heaven and even through knowing partially now, but knowing all my life, love will never fail. It's not like these other things in our life. See, because the Bible, Paul uses this illustration. He says that when I was a child, I, I spoke as a child. I acted as a child, no reason as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So in, let me put it a, a different way. When, when I was immature in my faith, I didn't walk in love. But when I became older in my faith, I learned what it was to walk in the love of God. Uh, we, we have kids. I, I, I love my children, and I, bless, God bless them. I'm not going to use my kids as an example because y'all think I'm talking about one of them. I'm not. But if Preston one day... who's 12 years old, if, if Preston wants to stay up in the evening and play video games and eat Cheetos, I'm okay with that. He doesn't like Cheetos, he likes Doritos, okay, <laughs> right? And if he, if he wants to do that, he's 12 years old, let him play on the video game and talk to his friends and let him talk to his friends that are in Hawaii and his friends that are in North Carolina, one of them's here today, by the way, and, and wherever, and, and let, let him have fun doing that and let him do it. Because you know what he's got to do tomorrow? He's got to get up tomorrow and has no job to go to. He has no responsibility. He's 12 years old. He's a child. Let him be a child. Let him eat candy. Let, let him have fun, but let him also have responsibility, a little bit. He's 12. However, if you have a son in your house who's 52 doing that, <laughs> I remember several years ago, a couple years ago, they, they had this family had a 30 plus year old that would not leave the house, their child, their son, and they had to get the judge to have an eviction to get him out of the house. Let me tell you what my dad would have done. If, if, if my dad would have spanked me, for allowing to have my son do that kind of stuff. Think about it for a minute, though. Think about it. We know it's the way it should. Okay, it's okay if you're a certain age. But as you get older, you should have some maturity about you. So you can't spend all night playing video games and calling out sick for work. What you do is you may have fun, and that's good, but then you also show up to work, and you also pay your bills, and you're also responsible for filling your car up with gas. Can you imagine just driving your car one day? Do, 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 do. Well, somebody didn't fill my car up. Well, you learn to fill your car up with gas, right? That's called growing up. That's called maturity. I don't even know why I'm having to tell y'all this. It's just part of it, right? Y'all know that. And, 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 and we laugh. But when we don't operate in love as believers, we show that we're childish. When, when we don't operate in love and we, get, we, we let envy get in the way and we boast or prideful, God says, now, look, operate in love, not in that stuff. Operate in love. So when I was a child, it's okay to operate the way you operate. When you get older, spiritually, you have to grow in love. Am I making sense to you? And then he says it's like looking at a, looking at a mirror. You know, you see darkly in a mirror, but then face to face, and I'll keep going. So understand that there's something about love that God has for us that is greater, listen, that is greater than any other love. It's this love that is persistent, and it's a love that he wants to flow in and through us as his children, because love never fails. I read it earlier. Where there is prophecy, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will go away. Where there is knowledge, you won't need it anymore. When you're in heaven, all those things in heaven, you won't need then he says this, those that abide faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is what? Love. 
Most Bible commentators would tell you that when the Apostle Paul begins to talk about love in verse 4, he is not describing a great idea. He is describing Jesus Christ. That he uses love as a person. And love does have a name, y'all. His name is Jesus. Love does have this desire. We, we do see him living in this place of, of love for us, love that is greater than all of our sins. So I tell you this morning in these next couple of minutes that love is the thing that motivates you because hear me out that if you're married in this room or you're dating in this room or, or looking, <laughs> there are times when Eros love runs out. Well, I don't feel like I'm in love anymore. Well, you make a mistake by saying that you thought love was a feeling. You wrapped up, you got confused with how you felt with what love really was. Because you were so used to the mood music playing and the flowers and the serving each other that, that you forgot that love was a decision, choice, and a commitment beyond your attractiveness. So when that love seems to be diminishing, God has given us his love to push us through. When, when, when the love for your family is hard and stretched and stretched and stretched and stretched and stretched. The Bible says this. The Bible says that if my father and mother forsake me, God, you will never forsake me. So it shows me that there is a time where maybe your father and mother would get to the point where they're just done. They feel pressure. I can't do this anymore. But Scripture says that even when that love begins to heavy in you, God's love takes over and helps you go the extra mile. The Bible even says that when it comes to friendships, that when there's division among friends, what does the Scripture say? When you have friends and things go bad and you, you need forgiveness, the Scripture says what? Forgive as you have been forgiven. Show the love as you have been shown love. What, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that of all the loves you can experience, the greatest love you could ever experience is the love of God. And when you let the love of God and His love flow through you, it will absolutely change every other relationship you have. Faith, hope, love. The greatest of these is love. It's love. Just the other night, and Kirk, you can come if you would. The other night we had night to shine, and, and uh, as we were, Kim and I, Kim's here, she, she and I have this opportunity, this opportunity at the end of night to shine because, of course, you know, if you were here, honored guests come in. There's Aunt Ross Vez and man, did a great job with helping folks cheer folks as they come in the door and, and, and the makeup and the hair and and it was great. Thanks, Melissa, and all the stuff you did with that. I mean, it's just great over there. And, and the flowers are given out and, and all the great things that are happening. And then these, there's cheering and there's music and there's all kind of stuff, you know. And, and, and there's fun and there's laughter. And there comes a point in that service, that, mo that moment, that, that night, where they give the pastor an opportunity to crown kings and queens. And it is that moment that is the most meaningful for me. I, I spent almost all day Saturday crying, didn't we, Kim? Because you guys put videos and pictures online and just, y'all killing me. <laughs> Watching videos and pictures, picture of a fireman who, whose sister has, uh, who st has a sister with special needs, who surprised her showing up at the door, and she comes in and she's like, oh my goodness, my, her brother, and oh my, yeah. I mean, I cried every time I saw it. People uh, showing pictures of faces, your faces, people of folks with special needs, faces, honored guests. And so Kim and I have this opportunity. We stand right over here. And right over here, we have, uh, there, there's, they line up, everybody lines up with their buddies, and they come down. By the way, some of the folks fell in love with their buddies that night, which is funny. It's so cute. But, um, they, they, they line up over here in the wall, and then they, they begin to announce. Pastor Conrad said something about it, crowning, and they come through, and, and Kim and I have this privilege that we crown. She crowns the, the men, and, and I crown the ladies, and we crown them king and queen of the prom. They've never been crowned before. They've got a crown like that. 
Princesses get that, right? That's right. Sure do. That's right. You're right. They sure do. And so they're, they're coming up, and they've got this red carpet going out the door. And, and, and we crown kings and queens. And as they're walking out, there's a group cheering them. And they walk in this red carpet, and there's a lot of noise, and it's exciting. And it's an amazing night. And uh, we get to do that. One of the young ladies that got my attention was this lady right here. Go ahead and show me some of these queens. There she is right here. <laughs> you. Hey. Hey. Oh. Hey. Hey. And um, she was, she, right there. It's her. Isn't she beautiful? I mean, I'm telling you. And um, I, did, I didn't know she was here until somebody told me between services. She's here, and Alex told me on the stage. So she comes up here, and, and, and I'm crowning, and I see her face. There she is right there. She's sitting right over there. And they put makeup on her. Y'all put makeup on her, didn't you? And, and, and you fixed her up. She comes down, and... And I have to pause for a moment because I'd seen her face over there, how excited she was to get everything going. And I, she's standing right there, and I had to take a pause. Kim, you remember that, right? Kind of took a moment. Good. All good. I took the crown, as I said to others too, but I said this to her. Two things. You are beautiful. And it is my honor to crown you queen. And she went off. Everybody's excited. She's excited. You saw her get excited just then. She gets all excited. She showed me the other picture. I think there's come a couple of pictures of, of her going down. Would you show it to me? She's all excited going down. And um, just so good. And um, I... I I left there that night, and, and I'm so grateful for caregivers and people that work all the time. This is the easy part we get to do, and it's so great for you guys to be so faithful at that. And, and I thought to myself, and I don't know, I don't know, but I wonder, you know, I, I wonder if, 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 um, if, if maybe her, her parents have gone on to be with the Lord, and I wonder if the last thing they thought about is what's going to happen to my girl. I wonder that. And I'm sitting here yesterday, and I'm, I'm standing up there, and I'm so overwhelmed. God said, God, I feel so full. I just feel so full. I'm not even talking about the emotion of it. I'm talking about just full. I don't feel, I feel full. And God reminded me, because I said it earlier, and I say it now, that we share the love of God. What I felt was the love of God. That's what I always want to feel. I don't want to feel, I want to feel His love always. I want His love always to go through me. I want His love always to pour out in my heart. I want His love always to pour through me. I want to, I want to sense His love, not just for me, for people, because I just want to be a vessel. I just want to be a vessel. I just want to be a vessel. I just want you to use me. That's the love of God. And I was reminded of one more thing. And I didn't think about this until this morning, really. Maybe yesterday. She is me. She is me. What do you mean, Pastor? What I mean by that is, there was a time where I couldn't do anything. I had need. There was a time where I didn't feel like I was much. There was a time that I didn't feel like I had a lot. Somebody brought me to a man named Jesus. And he crowned. And, and he placed a crown on my head and says, Not you're the king of the prom, but he said, You are my child and I love you. What if, what if in this room today, right where we are, we would commit ourselves to not only receive the love of God, but let his love flow through us. 
Guys, what y'all felt? What you felt the other night, the fullness you felt was God's love. The tears come and go, but that fullness in your heart is the love of God. That's the love. That's the love I want to live in. I want to be addicted to it. I want more of it. Would you stand with me, bow your hearts? We're going to sing. We're going to sing. We're going to sing together. Father, we just, we praise you for being so good to us. I just, I don't know, Lord. There are people in this room right now that are, uh, that are away from you. Backslid. They don't know the love of God, but they can. I pray you would speak to their hearts. I pray you would open their hearts. I pray they'd respond to your gospel and be your people. I pray this in Jesus' name. Let's sing together. Can we do this? Well, what you've just heard and hopefully what you've just experienced is a life-giving message, a message of truth, a message of hope. It's a message of the gospel that wherever you've been, the Lord knows where you are and he can reach out to help you. Maybe right now you're experiencing something called conviction. Or maybe inside of your heart you, you feel something needs to change or maybe you're even tearing up right now. Let me tell you, the Lord is convicting you to draw you to Jesus Christ. I believe the Bible is very clear that there's only one way to heaven. It's through Jesus. And Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and for your sins, for my sins. So you can be forgiven. So everything you've ever done can be washed away and never counted against you again. And not only did he die on the cross, he rose again from the dead. Which means that this life, when it's over with, isn't the end. We have heaven that we will get. And we can avoid hell, which we deserve. The good news for you and me is that the way we receive that is to believe in our heart and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So would you do that right now with me? Would you just right now believe in your heart that Jesus died for you and believe that he rose again for you? Give him your sin. Give him your failures. Give him your past. Give him everything you've done wrong. And he will wash you clean and make you new. Would you do that with me right now? Just right now, look right at me as I'm praying for you and repeat this after me. Say, Jesus, I believe you died for me because I'm a sinner and you died for sinners. And I also believe you rose again from the dead, which means you have victory and power. And because you rose again, I can have a new life. I can reset my life and start forward with you and with all the help you give me. Lord, I confess you right now as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life, wash away all my sins. And help me live for you from this day forward. I confess you right now as my Lord and as my Savior. And I thank you for everything you've done for me. Lord, help me to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let me encourage you right now. As you've made, prayed this prayer, as you move forward, as what God is doing in your life, to take some moment and grab a Bible, grab, grab a scriptures, get the Gospel of John, begin to read John. Ask God every day to help you as you walk with him to to live this thing out. Go tell somebody about what God's done for you. If you've never been baptized, be baptized. And ask God to help you as this new life starts that you would continually follow him. Because I know that what he does in us is a great work and a wonderful work. And he who began a good work will complete it. It's a new day for you. It's an exciting day. It's a great day. And this is the day the Lord has made. And today it's our time to rejoice. Thank you for watching this video. I'm thankful for what God's doing in your life. And we believe the best is yet to come. Hey, everyone. I'm Taylor Mahala.